I'm Chris Duke and today on Motors we're going to show you how to install a truck cap from Lear as well as a bed rug and a bed tread. Now welcome to Motors. You probably noticed that we're not in our normal shop and that's because we're out on location in San Diego. The reason is we've got this big old lifted Ford Super Duty. It's not going to fit in the shop. What we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to install one of these truck caps from Lear. This is a 100XQ. Now normally a dealer would install this for you, but if by chance you should want to pick one up yourself and install it, we're going to show you the step by step on that. Now once we've installed that, we're going to take this bed rug right here and toss that into the bed. Now once we're all done with this vehicle, we're going to head back to the shop and we're going to install one of their newest products called Bed Tread. It's kind of like the bed rug, but totally different on a GM truck. Let's get started on this guy. Now the first thing that you need to do is you need to put your cap up on the bed of your truck and you're going to need a couple buddies to help you out with that because these things are really heavy, especially this one on our long bed pickup truck. There's an awful lot of glass on there. So once you've got this kind of set up there, we need to put on a weather strip right here on the front of the bed and that's to keep all those elements from coming in. That's not unlike any other tonneau cover that you might install. Once you've got that put on, you need to disconnect the third brake light. And the reason is, is because once you hit your brake pedal, it's going to shine some light onto the cap and back in the cab. It's just going to be a big hot mess. Now there is a third brake light that's on the back of the cap. We'll show you how to connect that in a little bit. Now after you've got that third brake light disconnected, you can move your Lear cap all the way to the front of the bed of the truck. Ready? Yep. Okay. All right, one more. Right about there. Now you want to make sure that both sides are aligned properly and then close the tailgate. Make sure you've got some good fitment there and on the driver's side. Now you can lock down your Lear cap with the provided clamps. There's six of them. This fat end here goes underneath the bed rail, and this skinnier end goes between the rail and the cap. Now you're going to need a half inch socket as well as a half inch wrench to tighten these down. Now the Lear 100XQ comes pre-wired for a third brake light as well as this interior light. And all you've got to do is drop the provided harness down in one of your factory holes in your bed. I'll show you how to hook up the wiring of that next. Connect the dark green wire from the Lear wiring harness to your brake light wiring, which on our Super Duty is this light green wire here. Then also find a local ground and connect that one. Then you're also going to want to find a 12 volt power source and run that wiring harness all the way up to the engine compartment and connect it to your battery. Now Lear offers this knob on the interior to crack the window and that provides just a little bit of ventilation. Now that does it for our Lear 100XQ install. It's not too bad. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install a bed rug which is not only going to protect our knees but also our valuables. And it's pretty easy to install. The first thing you want to do is invert it then there's this giant zipper that goes all around the outside of it. You want to zip that thing up. Now the bed rug comes with all these hook and loop fasteners and there's a couple of long strips that go along the front here as well as on the bottom. On the sides, you just peel one off and it comes with these nice little indentations here and you just stick them on, 
one by one. Now there's the last one, looks pretty good. Now if you've got all those hook and loop fasteners on, we need to invert the bed rug and then put it on into the truck. Now before you go sticking all these hook and loop fasteners down, you need to prep the surface. So grab some rubbing alcohol and a rag and clean the surface. Now you want to make sure that you actually do the bottom ones first before you do all the sides. Now one of the other things you need to make sure you do is remove your tie downs before putting on your bed rug and after you put your bed rug on, pop some holes in there and then put these back on. Well that about does it for our installation of our bed rug as well as our Lear 100 XQ. Both pretty easy to install. Now when we come back from our break, we're going to show you how to install a new innovative product from Bed Rug. These guys have been making the Bed Rug for years and they finally came out with a new product called Bed Tread. It's just as easy to install, but it kind of looks like a spray in bed liner. So we'll be back right after this break. Hey, welcome back. Now we're going to install another product from those same guys that have been making the bed rug for so many years. This is an innovative new product called Bed Tread. And what it does is it gives you that spray on bed liner texture. It's a little bit more rigid. It installs very similar to the bed rug with those hook and loop fasteners. Now we're going to install this on a Chevy pickup truck. And all you're going to need is some rubbing alcohol, a pair of scissors, a utility knife, and some rags. Now we've got a 2007 custom Chevy 1500 pickup truck for our bed tread installation which installs very similar to the bed tread that we just showed you how to install. It uses very similar hook and loop fasteners. The difference is that it installs in different pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this bulkhead piece right here by turning it around and installing some of the hook and loop fasteners. There's an adhesive version as well as a non-adhesive. We're going to go ahead and cut up some of this adhesive hook and loop fastener before we get to that part. After cleaning down your bed with some rubbing alcohol and a rag, take the adhesive fastener and you want to put a strip right along the top here at the very top and then on this bend here you want to put another strip right there. Now once you're done there, you want to cut five to six two inch long strips along the bottom here. With that bed rug, you've got a zipper that goes all the way around. On the bed tread, we're not as lucky. We actually use this two inch non-adhesive hook and loop fastener. It's got to go around the edge. So we actually got to take our strips that we laid down, move them up a little bit, because what we need to do now is we need to take this two inch strip and we need to lay it all the way around the edge. Now here, because there's a little bit of a dip, we're going to cut a section that's about that long, and another piece that's about that long, and another piece that goes down to here, and then another long strip of this. It's going to go all the way down the bottom. And this is going to allow us to attach the other panels to the bulkhead. Now similar to the bed row, you want to start the bulkhead. So take this bulkhead piece and take off the adhesive backing. 
off from the center on the bottom and you want to start putting that one down first. And once you've got the bottom laid down, then you can kind of press it on and then take off the other pieces that are on top and press those on as well. You got to make sure that the second half of this hook and loop fastener is hanging out. You don't want it to be curling underneath. Now with that first long strip pressed into place, Peel off the last one, and we're done with the bulkhead. Now with the bulkhead already installed, it's time to get to the side pieces. So after confirming that you've got the correct panel for the right side, go ahead and put the hook and loop fasteners on. You've got the same adhesive hook and loop fasteners all around the sides. It's important to note on these, you gotta put it around the wheel well just like this. And you've got the smaller strips that go along the sides as well as the top. And on the bottom, you've got that two inch non-adhesive hook and loop fastener. Now go ahead and stick down the two side panels, making sure of two things. The first one is to make sure that this two inch strip is sticking out all along the way. And the second thing is you want to start up here at the front because you want to make sure that the front of the side panel attaches to the bulkhead piece nice and snug. Now on the sides of the bed on our Chevy pickup truck, we've got these cargo hooks. You can't unbolt them, so what you have to do is just position everything in place and grab a box knife. You want to cut a slit right where that hook is. Now with those side pieces in place, we can finally get to the bottom. Now you can do this outside of the vehicle, or you can put the bottom of the bed tread inside the vehicle upside down so you know how everything's going to fit into place. So cut a 48 inch long strip that's going to lay down right here in the center. And some smaller pieces are going to go on the four sides just like that with a longer strip that goes down here on the tailgate piece. Once you have all those laid down on the top ridges, you can peel off the back side of the tape, flip it around, and stick it down. Now with all your 3M hook and loop fasteners pushed down real good into this material, you can flip it around. We're going to start by peeling off the center piece putting that down real good, and then we're going to do the sides. We're going to do one side and then the other side. Once we have that done, then we'll do the tailgate piece. Just make sure when you're also putting these down that you push them in to this two inch piece that's hanging out on the sides.
Now once you've got the bottom down on top of the sides, you can go ahead and step on it and press it down because you want to make sure that everything is pressed down and latched properly. If you have a rubber mallet or another persuasion device, that'll also help. Now with the tailgate piece, you need to also lay down two long strips of this hook and loop fastener, one at the top and one at the bottom. And then, once you've turned that around, on our truck we've got this plastic cap, and we're actually going to put it on that cap. We're going to use some of that adhesive promoter along here to make sure that it sticks real nice. Now this is looking pretty good. It looks just like a spray and bed liner with the advantage of being that you can remove it anytime that you want. Now we just have the tailgate piece to put down. Now after we've put that adhesive promoter down here on the plastic part of our cap, we can go ahead and flip this down and seat it in place. Then check to make sure we've got good fitment everywhere around and then we're done. Check out the Motors TV website to watch all of your favorite episodes and more, and talk with other viewers online in our popular forums area. Catch the latest news and information surrounding the show, as well as the entire automotive industry. Take Motors with you on the road with our free app available for the iPhone and iPod Touch, and win free parts by entering in our monthly giveaway. It's all right here at www.motors.tv. Welcome to our letters segment. Now before I get to this huge stack of letters that you guys sent in, I wanted to talk to you about our forums area at the website. Now this is a growing community of an automotive enthusiasts and it's thriving with people asking questions, people answering questions, there's lots of tips and tricks for cars and trucks and motorcycles and pretty much anything that's out there. We've got a lot of old timers and we've got a lot of new kids that are just trying to figure out things. So. Head on over to the forums. If you've got a question, go ahead and pop it in there because you're going to get a lot of answers from people that just live there all day long. It's a great place. And plus, I hang out there too, and I'd be happy to answer your questions there or through other parts of the website. Now, let's get on to our letters. Now, Curtis Shockley writes in and asks, Hey, Chris, how do you change the bell housing on a 1989 Ford F-150 manual transmission? Well, Curtis, what you want to do is you want to pop off your drive shaft and remove all the connections to your transmission. Then you can unbolt the cross member and then drop the tranny. Once you do that, then you can finally get to the bell housing. Now, Ted writes in and says, Hi, Chris. I love Motors TV. Keep the videos coming. What car would you recommend for me besides a Ford Mustang? Ted, what you got against Mustang, brother? I prefer something that's cool and practical at the same time. Please suggest me some awesome cars, Chris. Well, Ted, uh, pretty much any muscle car isn't going to be very practical, so you can pretty much throw that out. If you're looking for uh, like a sporty tuner or something like that, I recommend the Subaru WRX. There's a couple different flavors of that. They're all pretty nice and fast. If you're looking for something a little bit more laid back, you can look for uh, like a town car looking type thing, a Chrysler 300C. Um, fits the bill. It's got that awesome Hemi engine in it. And if you're looking for a luxury sports sedan, I recommend you check out the Audi S4. Now Liz Henderson writes, My husband's birthday is coming up and I don't know what to get him. We have a 2004 Silverado and I'm looking to spend around 200 bucks. What do you suggest, Chris? 
Well, Liz, for 200 bucks, you can actually do quite a bit on a pickup truck. One of the more common modifications is installing a billet grill. It changes the looks and is pretty easy to install. We've even done it on uh, motors. Um, you can also get some aftermarket lights. There's tail lights and headlights, and you can pretty much do uh, a lot with 200 bucks there. Now, you can also get a soft tonneau uh, if he doesn't already have a tonneau cover for his truck. Now, you can also get a lot of ideas from our parts section at the website as well, as well as show your husband how to install it yourself just by watching it. And once he gets the product, you can go out there and install it for him. That'll really show him. And finally, Brian Vernon writes in and says, Chris, I live in Arizona and the sun is like death out here, destroying everything that's outside. I've got a 1998 Jeep Cherokee and the headlights are all yellowed and destroyed. What do you suggest I do? Well, Brian, that's actually a very common problem with older vehicles and depending on where you live, it could be worse. But what I recommend you do is pick up a headlight restoration kit like this one from Mothers. It's a complete kit that you can do yourself in just a couple of minutes. It comes with a power ball as well as the polish as well as some rags. And then if it's really messed up, it's got these severe damage restoration pads. It takes a little bit more work, but it'll clean them right up. Now we're actually going to show you how to use this product in a future episode of Motors. So keep on watching. Well, I want to thank Brian and everybody else for sending in their letters this week. It was fun answering them on the show. And if you want to send in yours, just head on over to our website and we'll catch you next time. Now, I'm sitting in the bed of our Project F-150 pickup, which has had a bed rug in it for years. And as you can see, it still looks brand new. It's easy to clean. All you need to do is just hose it out or grab a shop vac and suck out all the dirt. Now, if you're looking for further protection, you should install a tonneau cover or a truck cap like the 100XQ from Lear that we just showed you how to install in our Super Duty pickup truck. Now, if all that isn't your thing and you're just looking for some bed protection, check out the bed tread. It's kind of like a spray-in bed liner. It gives you that durability, but it's easy to remove. Now, for more information on any of the products that we installed in this episode or to watch more episodes of Motors, just visit our website. We'll catch you next week on Motors. Q comes pre. I don't know. It's right in front of the camera. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. It is. What are we on Avatar? I've ever had with my clothes on.